regents, vice chancellor, academic staff, parents, friends, partners, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure you'll agree with me that it was, it has been a wonderful, wonderful morning. It's a celebration of achievement by our own graduates, but also achievement of our institution. UCT has uh, managed to navigate the transition in which opening the doors and opportunities to a majority of our people does not necessarily mean that the democratization, it will result in dropping of quality. And I think this is a huge achievement which uh, UCT has to be proud of during these 20 years of our democracy. As you could hear, not only we have these graduates, but many of them with distinction, first class, which meets the pledge of this institution to excellence of teaching, of research, and hopefully also of service to our community. This morning we had a very thoughtful speak, speaker who challenged us to look at our society and how we contribute to build social justice. But this specific class, this specific graduation is to intervene and participate in one of, if not the most critical field of our life, education. While we can claim that we as an institution, we have done well keeping the standards of quality, our education system in the country cannot claim the same thing. You are quite aware of this. In any country, any nation, its future is defined on what is going to be precisely with the quality of education it provides to its young people and children. Most of our graduates today are experienced people in the area of education. They may have come to graduate for the first time, but many are coming for the second time. They know what our schools are. They know what our administration system is. They know where are the weaknesses which we have to confront and resolve if we wish as we deserve to be a successful nation. I'd like to ask you to think more than the technical interventions you may have to implement but to think seriously on the value system which is evolving, which is becoming part of our day to day. We have schools where children are not learning. They come out without reading, without writing, without mastering the basics of num numeracy. We have schools where violence amongst pupils themselves is prevailing. 
We have schools where we are confronted with early pregnancies. We have schools where people do not respect the teachers, but also teachers who are not coming to school. And when they come, they don't teach the whole of the curriculum which has been prescribed. So we have a serious problem with our education system. And that's where, while we seek social justice, as it has been referred this morning, more importantly, we have to reverse the situation. We need to plant the seeds which in 20, maybe 15, 20, 30 years time, what we have to reap from our schools will be young people, brilliant young people who master clearly the knowledge which is expected to be our equal, equality with other nations in 21st century. We are going to be a winning nation when from primary, secondary, technical, tertiary institutions, we offer to our society young people who can equal themselves to the so-called developed world. But more importantly, it means they will be equipped to be productive within the demands of a very sophisticated society, very complex society, which the 21st century is offering. We also graduated here social workers. And it is also clear for us that in our personal relations, social relations in our families, social relations in our communities, this country, this nation is being challenged. So my send off to you, our graduates, is take the challenges of the field you embraced by choice and transform the sectors you are going to be acting or you are acting in. Offer generations to come the pride of having children who really are equipped not only in knowledge but also in values, in behavior, in attitudes, children and youngsters who will not be only comfortable with themselves, but they will be comfortable in their relationship with the other, and they will not fear the other. The divisions we have in this society, whether they are racial, whether it's uh, gender, is because we fail to embrace the other. And I'm not talking of reconciliation in terms of uh, tolerance. You don't have to tolerate your fellow citizen. You have to embrace him or her, and you have to accept him or her as equal. So we need to cross this bridge. We need to cross the bridge in which we really feel comfortable with ourselves, we don't feel challenged when we relate to people who may have a different race than ours, people who may have different gender as ours, people who may have beliefs which are different from ours. But as far as I know, whether it's Allah or God or ancestors, God is God and respect is respect for that bigger energy force which is beyond our comprehension. And we all 
are equal as human beings. And I think as we graduate and we congratulate our students today, we want you to take from this institution very clearly the mission, our mission in which you can say, yes, you did receive teaching and education of quality. Now, continue wherever you are to research. Help our nation to understand why. More than just trying to deal with the problems, try to understand why. Try also to offer answers of how, because I think that's where we fail. We identify problems, but we don't understand deeply why, and we, or not always we do have answers to how. And the knowledge and the tools you are taking from this institution should help you and help us all to find answers to why and how. 20 years from now, remember this day, which was so special. It is the day of your graduation, but it is the day of reconciliation. And I want to call it the day of acceptance of one another. 20 years from now, look back and be able to identify clearly what has been your personal contribution to make our society much healthier, much caring, much loving, much productive, and really a winning nation. Congratulations to all of you. And And to parents, partners, or friends, thank you very much for having not only supported your beloved ones, but more importantly for having chosen UCT as the institution you would entrust to contribute for their formation and education. I want to wish all of you I always have to thank, before that, I have always to thank our academic staff. I'm so proud of you. Whatever we say... <laughs> when we say... When I say we are navigating this transition without compromising in quality, it is you, actually, on a daily basis, you are working to make sure that our students will get the best, but the best of teaching and research you can provide. So all of us, uh, the success of this institution is one of the world-class universities in the world. That is due to your work. And we should never forget, and we will never thank you enough for having been able to keep us up there at these levels of standards. And you know, in any, whether it's a bus, whether it's a train, whether it's a ship, whether it's a plane, you get to destination when you have the right pilot, when you have the right driver, isn't it? We have to try to thank very sincerely our vice chancellor, our deputy vice chancellors, all our leadership, including the university council, which gives guidance to all of us to move as a family, but in which really we have this discipline, we have this focus, and we are able to deliver 
with pride. And because we will be very soon celebrating Christmas. It is a time where all of us will be surrounded by our beloved ones. And we will have a moment of uh, pause, reflection, peace, recharging our energies for the year to come. I wish each and every one of you a really very, very peaceful Christmas and a happy, prosperous New Year. And we begin in 2015, the second 20 years of our democracy. Each one of us should try and say, in this new journey, what my contribution is going to be and stick to that with the same discipline and focus which our institution has been doing. God bless you.